Hey everyone, it's Silva and today is the first in a three-part series uh, for my gear that I used on the first 657 miles of the Appalachian Trail. I'm going to go over how it held up, what I liked and what I didn't like, and if I would change it if I could. So stay tuned. So today's video uh, will be the big three and then I'll do uh, another video probably come out next week that'll be uh, clothing and rain gear and anything that I wore shoes socks all of that and then I'll do a final video on anything else that I hadn't talked about in this one in those two so the first piece of gear that I want to talk about for my big three is my and I do have a pretty detailed video of this uh, of my review of my pack that I'll link here. This is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Junction 2400, and I really overall loved this pack. Um, it did start to come apart a little here, uh, along here. I, it'll it would have held up just fine to keep going. Um, so I will continue to use this pack. It does have big pockets on each side, and uh, this. Pockets, big pockets on the waist belt to hold things, and I did add this water bottle holder. Now, one drawback, the straps are not super padded, but this pack worked well for me. It fit my body, uh, and it worked well. Overall, it's almost 100% waterproof. I did, to be safe, uh, have a pack liner in it that I used um, through the whole thing. I did rip, rip it a little at the top, but that was because I was yanking on it. I got the pack liner, uh, it came in a two-pack Gossamer Gear two-pack pack liner, so I had another one that I could replace it, that one with, and you could use a trash compactor bag as well, it, either, anything would work, uh, but I never needed a rain cover for it because it was almost 100% waterproof. Okay, so like I said, overall I did love this pack, um, I'm going to continue to use this pack. The only thing I would change if I were going to go buy this pack today is uh, this is the 2400 I would have bought the 3400 um, there's not much weight difference this one weighs 1.88 pounds and I'm not I can't remember what the other one weighs but I'll find out and put it down here it's just you know there's more room for the most part I had room but there were times when I was trying to carry a longer food carry that it just didn't fit good in this pack I just didn't have enough room and I had to tie the food <laughs> To the outside so that's the one thing I would have changed I would have gotten the 3400 because the weight difference is minimal and I would have had more room for my food other than that I love my pack next I thought I would talk about my tent and I have the big Agnes uh, fly creek UL two-person tent and overall I loved I loved my tent so the tent with the poles and stakes weighs 2.1 pounds um, it held up great in the rain for me. There's only a couple times that it started to get wet and that was when it was literally downpouring on us on a slight slant and it was just super windy. Uh, but other than that, it really kept me dry. The one thing I would have preferred, this one, I'll put, try and put insert a picture here. It has the front entrance and I really, after getting in and out of it, I got pretty good at it, but um, I think a side entrance tent would be nicer. It would be easier to kind of roll in and out of, especially um, at night when you're trying to get out. It's freezing cold and you need to use the bathroom. But um, other than that, it's really the only thing I would say that I didn't like. The tent poles and stakes I carried in the pocket of my backpack. And um, the one other thing I actually am changing is for the whole 657 miles, I used the tent stakes that came with the tent. They look like this. Um, and I never added a rope or anything to them, which made it sometimes very difficult to get out of the ground. So I am changing to the mini groundhogs. Um, they're a little lighter, not a significant amount, but I th believe they'll be, they'll be better. They're a little lighter and they have a little thing to pull in and out. I could easily add that. There's a hole for this, but I just think these will be better. Um, so I'm changing over to these. And other than that, I'm not changing my tent at all. I also did use the footprint specifically by Big Agnes for my tent. Um, I know a lot of people sometimes use Tyvek. I did purchase the specific footprint and it made my setting up my tent really easy, especially on windy days when I finally figured out exactly the best way to set it up in the wind and not be 
frantically scrambling, uh, but it really did help. And I know there's a way to set it up in the help set it up in the rain with just the fly first. Uh, so I really did like the footprint, which weighs four ounces. Uh, so I would definitely I recommend it, and I will continue to use it. So next is the sleep system. So I did keep my sleeping bag in um, a Cedar Summit waterproof compression sack. Um, my, I just wanted the extra added benefit of having it in a waterproof bag and because my sleeping bag is not down it does not compress easily so I needed to get it in here so so my sleeping bag, my sleeping bag itself is the big Agnes blue lake 25 degree uh, women's petite mummy bag and it weighs 2.4 pounds I know a lot of you think that's heavy for a sleeping bag uh, especially 25 degree one but it is synthetic um, I don't do down so this is the lightest weight reasonably priced one that I could find that I could stuff down the most which is hard in a synthetic bag so this is what I went with I love this bag it works great I know it's only a 25 degree bag but I did add the sea to summit reactor liner which added quite a bit of warmth to it and it made it so that when I got to town, I really could just pull out the liner and wash the liner and not have to worry about my funk getting on my sleeping bag. Um, I just washed the liner every time and I didn't have to wash the bag once while I was on trail. I do need to wash it now. It's been stuffed in the sack and I should have took it out. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> but yeah, so overall this was a great sleeping bag. I got this combination down into the teens. Uh, it got down into the 18 degrees and it, it kept me warm, so. Uh, this is a great combination. I highly recommend a liner, especially if you don't have a zero degree bag. Um, it really helps add extra warmth. And again, it keeps your hunker funk kind of contained to this instead of your whole sleeping bag. All right, so the next part of my sleeping system was my pillow. And I know not everybody carries a pillow. This pillow, I can't remember. I don't have the weight on me, but I will look it up. I know it's not very much. It's just a few ounces and it was totally worth it um, for, this is the Nemo Philo Elite pillow it really just takes a couple seconds to blow up just a few breaths it's got a cloth liner over it you can throw it in the wash it's very comfortable yes I can use a puffy or something like that for a pillow but for me as a side sleeper this worked perfect sometimes I wanted to wear my puffy at night if it was colder I didn't very often but just in case I wanted it um, I wanted to be able to have a pillow so this worked great then uh, for my sleeping pads I used the two sleeping pads uh, and I would continue to carry this one because it's so lightweight my original thought was I'd send this home when it got warmer it's just the Gossamer gear thin light one eighth of an inch foam pad but it really did add some warmth under my blow-up pad so this was great it was also great when I stayed in the Smokies and shelters I was able to you know put this down under my pad and have something to protect my blow up pad so this was great it was super lightweight and uh, totally worth it I know right now they're sold out but I would definitely recommend something like this especially with an early start like I did and then my blow up pad was the Thermarest Neo Air women's X light sleeping pad it weighs 12 ounces overall I did really like this pad it was very comfortable there is a problem that I'm going to discuss the problem is because it, it's you blow it up with your mouth which is not always great every night but totally worth the comfort level but because you blow it up with your mouth your spit gets in here um, there was no for mine I, it's an older one and there still works great no holes or anything so I didn't replace it but it doesn't come with a pump or stuff sack and they don't fit this nozzle and you can see, which I'll show you, I think there's funk in there because of that. Let's see if I can show you. So I'm gonna hold it up to the sun and you can see um, the dark spots in there. That sort of worries me. Um, I keep you know, blowing it up each night and it looks kind of gross. So I think this is in definite need of a replacement that has a pump sack or a stuff sack. Something that I don't have to keep blowing into because I don't know, it just makes me think it's gonna make me sick. Maybe not, maybe I'm just overreacting. All right, so I'm not really sure how good you can see um, the funk inside the sleeping pad, uh, but really that's the only thing that I think needs to be replaced. And I would have just kept using it um, if I had, when I 
kept going, but now that I've, uh, I'm off and it's been sitting there, I'm definitely going to replace it before I get back on. The bummer is they're expensive. Um, so it's kind of a bummer that it got gross like that. But I now know I need to buy one that has like the pump, the stuff sack that pumps it up or something like that. All right, so that's my big three. I'll link my uh, first big three video that I did here in case there's some details that I missed this time. But um, I really, overall, I'm super pleased with what I have for my big three. I had done a lot of shakedown hikes, and so I know that, that it was really dialed in. But if I could change things, if I had lots and lots of money, I would definitely get a tent. The, one of the big Agnes that has the side entrance, I like my freestanding tent, so I would probably look at one of the other options that has the side entrance and definitely a different sleeping pad. Maybe I'd research a lighter sleeping bag that I could find that was synthetic. I don't know, I'm pretty happy with that. So those are the only things I would change if I could. Uh, I would have definitely got the 3400 backpack, but I, I do love my backpack and I'm pretty happy with my gear choices. They performed well. I hope this helps some of you that are doing some research now. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I will be getting the other gear videos together in the next coming weeks. Hope you guys are all having a great week. Thanks so much for following along. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you did. I will list the weights of everything in the description below. Hope you all have a great week and I'll see you in the next video.